Hi everyone, this is the second video that will discuss the concept of uh, the mole, molar mass, and Avogadro's number. So in the last video we discussed uh, the meaning of uh, mole as well as how we can use Avogadro's number to calculate the mass of a mole of any substance. So this next concept we're going to talk about is the one that you have to be really um, comfortable with and really uh, ingrained in your uh, head as early as possible and that's the concept of a molar mass and it's a very simple definition a molar mass is just the mass of one mole of a substance uh, so if you remember earlier in, uh, in a previous slide we calculate uh, we calculated the mass of one mole of oxygen atoms and we figured out that to be 16 grams and we also did the mass of a molecule which in this case happens to be methane and as it happens that mass is also 16 grams so the molar mass then is just the mass of a mole of the substance in this case for oxygen the molar mass would just be 16 grams and of course now it's expressed as per mole of substance so we usually write it as 16 grams per mole so you understand what this means this means that there's 16 grams of oxygen in one mole of oxygen okay similarly for methane we did the same calculation in the previous slide in the previous video so if you were to calculate for methane it will also be 16 grams of methane in one mole of methane okay so then we have basically two different numbers that we can use to convert uh, substances in the macroscopic scale in the grams uh, you know things that we can actually look and see and measure two things that are uh, small in the small size in the microscopic uh, range which are in the scale of atoms things that we can't see so if you have a certain grams of element and you want to convert it to how many atoms of that specific element you have you're going to need these two conversion factors the first thing you need to do is just take that mass that you have and convert it to number of moles. The reason this is important is because only by using number of moles can you convert that into atoms. So that's why this is an intermediate step that's necessary in this conversion. So first you take the mass and you convert it to moles. In order to do this conversion, you're going to need the molar mass of that element or you're going to need the molar mass of the compound if you're converting molecules or ions or whatever it is okay once you have that conversion to moles then the next step is to take the number of moles of the elements and convert it to atoms or to compounds or whatever it is again that you're dealing with um, and to do that you need Avogadro's number okay I just want to point out that one more thing that you might need is if you're uh, in compounds and you're being asked to convert to atoms then you of course need to multiply it by the correct number of atoms that you have in the formula of the compound okay and I want to illustrate that actually with this particular uh, problem which uh, would highlight that issue that I just talked about so in this case the, you, you have an example here where sulfur um, you know it is given you have a given amount of sulfur which exists as uh, compound really in the form of S8 okay and the question is if you have 25.1 grams of sulfur how many atoms of sulfur do you have there okay and we have to do the conversion that we just talked about in order to be able to solve that problem just uh, as a general note a sulfur is a is an element that's present in coal and the in the United States there's still quite a bit of um, coal burning plants that are uh, in uh, various areas of the country and when you burn coal the sulfur uh, part of the coal is actually converted to sulfur dioxide which when uh, combined with water can lead to formation of sulfuric acid and uh, in areas where there's a you know relatively high concentration of this when it rains it causes what we call acid rains and of course this means that when the rain falls on certain you know uh, parts uh, like infrastructure like metals and so on it's going to react with those metals and it's going to cause corrosion and so on because it's acidic so uh, this is definitely a, an important environmental issue you want to think about if you're interested in those uh, topics but in any case right now we're gonna talk about how we can convert this uh, do this conversion which is 25.1 grams of S8 
how many atoms of sulfur. Okay, so this is our problem, uh, the one that I just talked about. And what we want to be able to do is convert the uh, 25.1 grams of Sa2 atoms of sulfur. Now remember, if you look back at that slide where I show you the relationships uh, between these uh, quantities, the first thing you have to do is convert to moles. So we're going to calculate number of moles of um, S8 in 25.1 grams of S8. So the number of moles is just going to be the 25.1 grams right S8 and we then have to multiply this with something that would cancel out the grams and then convert it to moles so in other words the unit if you do dimensional analysis the unit has to be moles over gram but if you notice this is really just the inverse of molar mass molar mass has a unit of grams per moles in other words here you're multiplying by the inverse of molar mass or you're dividing by molar mass another way of saying it okay so then what you have to do is figure out in one mole of S8 how many uh, grams are there. Now if you remember, if you look up the periodic table, each sulfur has a um, uh, atomic mass of 32, okay? Uh, so it will be 32 grams per mole if it's just one sulfur, but we have eight here. So then that would be the number you'd be dividing by, okay? 32 times eight. If you do this, you should get point Oh, oops, let me do this again. Point oh nine eight um, moles. Okay. Now remember that this is S8 we're talking about here. So uh, the grams cancel out earlier in the dimensional analysis, so you're left with mole. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is then convert this to number of uh, molecules, okay, number of molecules in this case. Now this is a molecule, it's not just an atom because it has, even though it contains one element, it has multiple of these guys around. So number of molecules in this case is then 0 0.098 moles of S8 multiply, remember, by in every mole we have a given number of particle and it's always Avogadro's number. Okay, so 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. You do that multiplication, what you get is, should be uh, 6.08, if you round it, times 10 to the 22 S8 molecules. Okay. Now remember that in the question itself, we're not being asked molecules, but we're being asked atoms of S. So if you... Notice that here a number of atoms then is the number that we just got there, which is the molecule, molecules, right? And then we have to do a dimensional analysis again where we say here we want to cancel out our molecule and we want to convert it to atoms. So then the question is how many um, atoms of S do you have in one molecule of S8? Well, there's eight, right? This is eight, S8 is a formula. So then if you do this calculation, the answer that you'll get should be 4.86 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of S. Okay? So that's how you would do this conversion. And notice that in, in, in the way I do this is I use both of those conversion steps that I talked about in the prior slide. Okay? Okay, so that's the end of the discussion on... Um, the mole concept, molar mass, as well as how to do these calculations, these conversions. Um, again, on the form to the uh, right of these videos, you'll see questions that are relating to these concepts. And of course, in lecture, we'll do uh, even uh, more practice problems so that you'll get really good at these uh, conversions.